In that moment, I knew that every lesbian across the cosmos who would have read that line would be found shaking. Hi guys, um, welcome to my YouTube channel. My name is Zwaige Lemkliza, but everyone calls me Zwa. So I've always wanted to like make a YouTube channel where I speak about books and even the movies and series that I've watched. But I've just always been really scared and I've always wondered if it's something that people will enjoy. Um, but then I was like, we are in lockdown indefinitely at this point. Um, I'm not going to go to Cape Town until September. So I might as well just get on with it. I don't have any excuse um, for me not to do it anymore. So yeah, they will be talking about Triangulum by Masand and Janga. Um, this was actually a birthday present from a dear friend of mine, Kaya. It's the science fiction, speculative fiction story. Um, it tells the story of this unnamed character, like dead as she's not named at all throughout the entire book. She lives in King Williamstown with her dad, who's like extremely sick. And um, she is like this intelligent girl. She's a maths prodigy, like... Yeah, like, she's she's on the ball when it comes to her academics. She is visited by this apparition, um, she calls it the machine, and she believes that the machine and the apparition are all tied to um, her missing mother, um, who went missing about three years ago before the beginning of the story, the abduction of schoolgirls um, from her school, and this other missing boy who's involved with drug dealers, and she believes that this machine or the apparition are basically aliens that have abducted all of these people. And she and her group of like, and her closest friends decide, okay, you know what? We're going to Scooby-Doo the shit out of this and we're going to find out what the actual hell is going on. Um, This book is split into three parts. So that is basically the first part. The second part... It follows her when the girl, when she's like much older, she's working for this surveillance um, company and she is basically recruited by these, I wouldn't say recruited, she actually chooses to join this um, eco-terrorist organization um, and we'll talk about part two. In a moment, part three um, is basically linking all of part one and part two together and we actually find out, okay, were there actually any fucking aliens or is this all just a figment of her imagination? Let me move on to like just speaking about each part and part one. I loved part one. Part one is the reason why I'm giving this book four out of five stars. It was, in my opinion perfection like the pacing was beautiful the writing was really great i think the only problem is that like other the other characters other than our main character the girl the other characters were a bit like i didn't really care about them that much um because like there was just nothing there was nothing much given um to me about them the characters i was like i i honestly couldn't care less about you i loved part one it would really explored so much about our main character when it comes to her identity, when it comes to her and her, her missing mother and how she feels about that. And also I liked how she was exploring her sexuality in such a wonderful way. On page 39, she's walking with her friend. Um, her friend's name is Pat and they're just chilling and like walking from school. And then the main character, like the girl, she's like, would you like to be my girlfriend? And then Pat looks at her and she's like, yeah, sure. And in that moment, I knew that every lesbian across the cosmos who would have read that line would be found shaking. In what world does like a 17 year old girl looks at another girl and be like, yes, would you want to be my girlfriend? And the other girl is like, yes, let's do it. We get to like page 193 and they have a threesome. I wrote here on my notes. Lesbians. Three fucking threesome. I, I, I think I preferred part one over the rest of the, uh, over the rest of the book. I liked the, like, the mystery surrounding it. That's what kept me going, reading and, like, wondering, okay, like, is she actually imagining these aliens or aliens actually involved? I really enjoyed that. I enjoyed 
like just following her and also i liked so basically part one follows like two timelines when the mother was still with them and when the mother was missing and you can see that like her father isn't really dealing with the mother being gone so well and she's also you know dealing with the fact that her dad is dying like her dad is like super sick and she's just going through a lot her mental health isn't like the best um because every time she sees the separation or she sees the machine like she has like really hectic seizures and like even at school although like she's like a math prodigy and stuff at school she um she's also going through a lot and she's also dealing with the fact that her mother's missing and could possibly be abducted by aliens but part one was really great in like you know following and in, in us following the story of like the mystery and the writing is so good, you guys. Like, I enjoy the writing so much. I think if you're gonna have such a weird story, the writing really has to be good and also simple. So I like that the writing was simple. It was easy for me to follow. Yeah, I think it was like just really, it was so well done. Then we get to part two. I didn't like part two as much. So part two basically follows um, the girl when she's like much older she's working for the surveillance company and like the company itself is like the ghetto part two the pacing was a bit annoying for me because like it felt like it was a second book joined with another book but also the second book was cut like so many things in the second book were cut off so I was like okay why is this happening um this is this feels inconsequential if I'm going to be quite honest and just like the way of the way that events would carry on carry out would be carried out would be <sighs> didn't like it part two we we follow the girl and she meets this artist who is part of this eco-terrorist organization and her name is Dee and Dee's like listen girl let me tell you some conspiracy theories and the girl basically d tells the girl that listen um there was a meteor uh, the media that hit the free state i think basically created two forks in the road for society and we are on the left hand and the left hand will basically result in society's end in society's collapse and my eco-terrorist organization is basically involved in like bringing society back onto the right hand. I kid you not, the girl looks at D and is like, I know her strap is big. I, I know her strap is big. I know it. And that's why I'm going to join this eco-terrorist organization. I, I, I'm telling you right now, she didn't join. Okay, fine. She probably joined because she's like, oh my gosh, you're kind of right. Like, society is going to shit. So we should probably like do something about it, even if it's through terrorism. But the strap girl, I want you to top me. And that is why she joined the eco-terrorist organization. Number one. Number two, D, the person who basically leads this eco-terrorist organization, they called it the Returners, by the way, is a Scorpio sun with an Aquarius rising or an Aquarius moon because she's like really hot, but like she's also like involved in like deep conspiracy theories that are like bitch the fuck you can't be serious right now and also part two takes place in like 2040 part two basically takes us to black mirror version of south africa things are like the ghetto and there's there's a bomb that's placed on like table mountain that like is gonna kill people and shit everyone is like living in poverty and there's like the surveillance company that's basically taking poor people and like exposing them to like really bad like stuff and drugs and monitoring them so that they can gain information and also like these poor people no one cares about so they're using these people for their own gain and it's like really wild and there's also Y'all, part two has secret societies upon secret societies. Like, it's wild. Okay, so let me explain the fever dream of part two. And what the fuck. So, the main character is part of the surveillance company that has a secret sect. And she's part of the secret sect. Then, she is recruited by another secret organization called Mark. Mark tells the main girl... That she needs to gain intel on the returners and D. 
and D recruits the girl for the returners. But also D knows that the girl is gaining intel on them for Mark. I think that's why I didn't like part two. Because I was like, why are there so many secret organization? Is this the fucking fixer? Like, what the fuck is going on? Like, the writing was simple enough to follow. But the thing is, the concept was like, bro, like, you're losing me here. I gotta say it. I don't understand what the hell is going on. Because this is the fixer. And then we get to part three. And I shit you not. When I was reading the certain section in part three where everything is revealed, I was like, Is this fucking Arrival? If you've watched Arrival, you know how it ends. Guys, it, it, it almost ends like that. It almost ends like that. And you're like, no fucking way. <laughs> <laughs> so basically, when you get to part three, you realize that the big villain, the big bad guy, the big in antagonist of this entire series was in fact capitalism <sighs> so yeah that's that's basically it thank you guys for watching bye um but if i'm being quite honest if i'm going to be quite honest about this i loved how the themes were explored like there were themes of like how south africa was dealing with post-apartheid and how it was dealing with like colonization still being like the legacies of colonization and how like so many people are still affected by it it really dealt with like capitalism and like you know how the world is going to shit and we need to change now and like part two for the most part was like a black mirror um episode and i think i did enjoy that i was like okay cool, cool i like this i wanted more from that i wanted i wanted us to explore um this apocalyptic south africa and i feel like the world building for part two wasn't my favorite i think i would have wanted just a little bit more oh my gosh so there's this part in um part one when the girl realizes or like she like comes to the conclusion that you know what maybe there weren't any aliens maybe it's it just i just i maybe i really am losing my mind because she starts writing letters <clears throat> to her mother and she's like, you know what, this is the last communication that I'm going to have with this person. Um, because I've accepted that she really is gone. I don't know where she is, but she's gone. And I thought they were aliens. I Bitch, I thought, but, but it's not. And the last few pages of um, part one are like... I was like... <laughs> I was like so sad. And I was so moved because like she's really realizing that, you know what, like... It, it 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 is what it is. I'm never gonna see this woman again. Maybe I'm the problem. Maybe there's something wrong in my mind. Maybe I really am unraveling, and I've unraveled. Uh, I've been unraveling ever since you left. And it's just beautiful writing. It's so sad. I was like in my fields, and I remember reading this while I was in Cape Town, and I remember how they were like. It was like two weeks before end of block and I was reading that part and I was like, oh my God, like, girl, we are Goa and same bitch. I'm going through it. I'm also unraveling, but your unraveling is way, way worse than mine. Love and light, sis. I wish you so much peace and strength in this difficult moment of your life. All in all, I would give this book a four out of five. Um, I think there were some things that were really well done in part one. Part two, I think the concepts were like really high and I appreciated them, but I I don't think that I appreciated the execution of it. Um, I think I wanted just a little bit more. I wanted it to be a little bit more streamlined in part two. Would I reread this book? Probably. In conclusion, I would recommend this book to to anyone really. Like if you are a fan of science fiction and you are a fan of reading fever dream books and you are a fan of speculative fiction and Black Mirror but in written form, I would recommend this to you. If you want to feel like you just smoked some weed and I don't know, you went on a three day bender on drugs, this book is for you. If you feel like you want to do some philosophy and you want to be divorced from reality this book is for you if you just want gay shit and if you want to know how other lesbians can get a girl this book is for you basically just
just read this fucking book. This is basically Triangulum and my review of it. Really enjoyed the book, really did, and I do recommend it to everyone, really. Um, so I think, am I gonna carry on doing this? Probably. Will this all end in flame? Find out next time. Um, also, um, thank you so much for joining me, you guys. Um, I'll be back next week with another review. I'm probably gonna speak about the Six of Crows duology. Um, I have some thoughts. I have some thoughts about that. Um, so yeah, thank you guys for joining and see you next time. Bye.